Hi everyone, so the tool that I decided to evaluate is Kahoot, and this could be used in synchronous and asynchronous learning. The whole entire premise behind this tool is for students to be able to answer questions. It's more of an assessment tool, and it could be even used as a pre-assessment, where the students are prompted with questions and then they have to answer them. And it actually is a game format, so the students are competing against one another to see who has the most points in the end. And then there also is ways for teachers to keep track of uh, the questions that students are having difficulty with and the, the, which questions they are getting correctly. And it could be in a uh, individual format or it could be as a whole entire group. So the teacher also has the choice though, if they wanna set up the uh, actual game as teams or if they wanna do it individually, which either way would be fine but it basically allows them to have a little bit more um, control over what they would like to do. So in order for you to start a Kahoot, you have two options. You have the choice to create your own Kahoot, which you could just um, actually add, add questions. There's a possibility for a time limit. You can change the time limit depending upon the question. You have point value system that you're able to adjust. Uh, although it only goes 0, 1,000, 2,000, that's because as the students are actually doing the game uh, they have the choice of getting up to that many points but depending upon how quickly they actually respond says how many points they actually achieved uh, there also is um, a spot for them to be able to add images you can upload an image you can use their image library which they have a whole bunch of different options with categories off to the side there's also um, a spot for you to add your youtube link and then at the bottom, you have your answer choices. Uh, in the basic version, you're only able to single select. That means that you can only have one answer correct. In the premium version or the in the pro version, it's, there's two different kinds, uh, you're able to multi-select. And then um, if you don't really think that you want to have your own question or you feel like, I just can't really think, think of a good question, there's a question bank where you're able to think of some type of idea, which right now I'm doing food chain, so I'm gonna write in food chain. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of different questions that come up that are related to that. So then what I could do is if I'm looking to generate it, I could just add it and it automatically adds it, but it also does not get rid of the other questions. And I can just go through and look at the different questions and I can just continuously add to um, my actual Kahoot that I'm creating. And then it, there is no limit to how many questions you want to have. And then when you are finished, you can just click the done button and then you're able to actually stream it or you can choose to assign it to your students. Um, that's one version that you're able to do. The other one is that you are actually able to look through games that were already created. So you would do discover and then you could also look for actual cahoots that have already been created and you don't have to do the legwork involved and you can go through the different questions as you can see there's a whole bunch of different different um, amounts of questions and things like that and then you're able to use those again live where your students can answer those questions live or they can choose to um, you could just send it to them as a virtual link and then they're able to do it as a assignment so um, there's a spot for you to collect all of your cahoots and you can keep track of them when you also have these cahoots, you have a spot for your drafts. If you're in the middle of creating something, you'll have a whole bunch of different options that are there for you. Um, then I also talked about how um, a teacher can keep track of what their students are getting correct and what they're getting incorrect, which is underneath the reports. So anytime that you stream an actual lesson, it'll say whether it's a live mode or it is a assignment mode, and then you can just open it. And when you open it, it'll go through which questions they got correctly. And you can also see which questions they did not do so well on, and then you'll be able to remediate depending upon how many people got that one, that one question correct. Uh, and then you can go from there. In Kahoot's basic format, it basically would be an immersive and quest-based learning for uh, your students to be able to collaborate where it's more of that game format where they're competing against each other, or you could choose to do it in teams, which means they don't have to be working together. I could also see how this could be used in, um, if students are demonstrating mastery, because 
they would be able to create their own Kahoot to show that they understand the material. And then they could also create uh, answer choices based upon what they've learned. And then they could also quiz their other peers to see what they actually know as well. So on the Kahoot website, there's actually a couple of different uh, types of upgrades that you can do. There is something that's called the pro version, which is uh, which would cost you three dollars a month and there is what's called the premium version which would cost you six dollars a month and there is a little bit of difference between them but everything that's available in the basic version is also available in the pro version and then everything in the pro version is available in the premium version but they just have a little bit of differences between them as in they add a little extra something to every single version that they have so the basic version is the one that i just basically described to you but the, pre the pro version is the next step up which would have you be able to add different types of questions so you wouldn't be limited to just multiple choice questions you would also be able to do puzzles or other types of questions and when you are, are asking the students questions you're able to actually insert slides in between if you want to give more information to your students as you're going through if you're doing the pro or the premium version as well that could actually be used as a reflection tool because the students have the option of being able to give you feedback about after they go through the different types of questions and they're able to actually pull them and see exactly um, what they found difficult with the questions as well as uh, what they might need a little bit of help with so that can really help them when they're going through the questions to see okay this is something i really need to be working on and that helps them as a reflection tool but it also helps you to see what they need to be working on as well so now looking at the premium version which would again cost six dollars a month they have a couple of other things that would um, also be a little bit more obviously but they would give you a little bit more um, to the actual website itself and one of those is that instead of only being limited to class size of students who are able to play at the same time you're also um, able to do a, sc a school size game. So that means that you're allowed to have a maximum of two thousand players playing at a, uh, all the same time, which would be like an assembly and things like that. It does not go through the amount of actual players you're able to have in the basic version though. It just says a class size. So my assumption would probably be somewhere between 30 to 35 students that you would be able to have as your maximum. Uh, another thing that the premium version has that the pro and the basic version does not have is that you have the choice of being able to add open-ended questions so students wouldn't be just limited to um, puzzles or multiple choice true and false questions they would actually be able to have those open-ended they are in the process of actually adding a word cloud option as well for students to be able to do um, it's in the early stages, it says coming soon, but that would also be available underneath the premium version. And the last thing that would be really helpful for teachers when it comes to the premium version that the other two versions does, does not actually have is personalizing the students learning. So when the students are given questions, it actually basically creates its own bank for every single student as to which questions they're getting incorrect. And then it would regenerate those questions for all the students. So that way they're able to practice the questions that they're not understanding or they're not getting correct. The last little bonus that it has for the premium version is that you're basically able to personalize your own account. So teachers would be able to uh, create an actual profile. They would be able to add their school logos and be able to add their school colors just basically personalize that to make it more around what their actual school would be and then they're able to see what other teachers in the same school are doing as well so you would have that option to be able to share between that and basically overall this kahoot uh, website when it comes to the tool it has the synchronous learning which would be yeah. the option to be able to host your kahoot and students will be able to answer questions. They would just use the code that's provided with a nickname that they can either have auto-generated or they can generate themselves and they can play along with each other. And again, in a, in a team format or it could be individualized. And then you also have the option to add challenges, which will basically be individuals um, being able to do it on their own time. They set their own time frame and not required uh, to be on at a certain time at the same time as others. They can just kind of do their own thing and that's be more like an assignment based 
And then the last step would be the collaborative outcomes. So in the basic version and any of the versions, you have the immersive and quest-based learning where it has the game oriented, but it's also the assessment part where the students are being able to answer questions. And then also I could see this being used as, as demonstrating mastery because students could actually be generating their own Kahoot to show that they understand the material that they're being taught. In the pro and the premium versions, this could easily be the reflection because the students have the option being able to reflect upon what they've learned and also reflect upon the questions that they're being asked and they're able to give that feedback to the actual teacher and they're able to reflect upon it themselves. Thank you.